Hey guys, it's Spiros from The Self-Help Photographer. Today is Sharpness Part 3. We're wrapping up what turned into a three video series on how to get tack sharp photos. Before we jump into it though, I have some awesome news. I'm holding in my hands the D600 from Nikon. This is awesome. I have to give a huge shout out to the camera company in Madison for helping to make this review possible for you guys. So do me a favor. Down in the description are links to the camera company's website and Facebook page. Check them out and head over to their Facebook page and tell them thank you for working with me and helping me to be able to review the Nikon D600 for you guys. Next Tuesday will be the full hands-on review. In addition, Pentax just sent me the new K50 SLR and their new Q7 mirrorless interchangeable lens camera. I will be doing reviews on these cameras as well. And in the future, I know some of you have asked, I'm going to be able to review the Pentax K52 and K52S cameras. So these are all reviews that are in the pipeline. Stay tuned, I'm working on them as quickly as possible. Today's sharpness topics I saved for last because it's kind of the easiest stuff to do to get sharp photos. With those first two videos, I wanted to get into some of the nitty gritty sharpness stuff that doesn't always get talked about very much or isn't the easiest to understand. Those are some pretty complicated topics we talked about over the last couple of weeks. Today's stuff is much easier. There's a lot to cover though, so let's jump right into it. The first thing that's critical to getting a sharp photo is shooting with a fast enough shutter speed to eliminate subject motion or camera shake. Choosing a fast enough shutter speed depends on different things though. So there is no one single answer to the question of what shutter speed do I shoot to get sharp photos. I mean, sure, you could shoot everything at 1 8,000th of a second, or you could certainly try to shoot everything at 1 8,000th of a second. That would freeze pretty much any subject and give you a sharp photo in that regard. But you'll find out pretty quickly that you cannot shoot 1 8,000th of a second and get a good exposure. When you consider the shutter speed, the first thing to consider is actually the focal length of your lens, because there's this rule of thumb out there called the reciprocal rule. And what that means is, you can safely get a sharp photo by shooting at one over the focal length of your lens. This specifically addresses camera shake from you, the photographer, holding your camera. Because our bodies tremble as we hold our cameras. We're not rock solid, steady tripods of people. So this reciprocal rule is pretty simple. Look at the lens that you're shooting with. For example, if I was shooting with my 60 millimeter macro lens, I would shoot at a minimum of 1 60th of a second. If you were shooting with the 70 to 200 millimeter lens, the slowest shutter speed you would want to shoot when hand holding your camera is 1 200th of a second. As I mentioned, this is a rule of thumb. And what that means is in some cases, you're going to have to shoot faster in order to get a sharp photo with your particular lens. And in some cases, you're going to find that you'll actually be able to shoot slower shutter speeds and still get a sharp photo. So the best thing to do really is to actually test each one of your lenses. Put the lens on, dial down your shutter speed starting at one over the focal length and then move down and see how low you can go and get a sharp photo. And when I say sharp, I mean sharp enough for you. The next thing to consider is how fast the subject that you are taking a photograph of is moving. If you're shooting a subject that is not moving, a still subject, you can safely shoot that at 1 30th of a second or faster. However, do not forget the reciprocal rule. So if you're shooting with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, 1 30th is too slow for that lens, even though it might be fast enough for the subject. So in that case, you would still want to shoot at 1 200th of a second. But if you were shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, you could safely shoot that subject at 1 30th of a second, provided you hold the camera steady enough. If you're shooting sports, you want to shoot around 1 200th of a second or faster. If you're shooting wildlife and birds, you're going to probably want to shoot around 1 1,000th of a second or faster. And if you're shooting pro sports, race cars, really fast moving subjects, you're going to want to shoot that at 1 2,000th of a second or faster. Now these are also guidelines. So what that means is you're gonna to have to test shoot and figure out what the best shutter speed is for the situation that you're in. To do that, go into your setting and before you actually have to start shooting, you wanna get there early, take a test shot and start at the low end of the spectrum. So let's say I'm shooting a high school football game. I go in there and I start at one one hundredth of a second and I take a shot of some of the practice action that's going on and I check the sharpness of the photo on the camera. And if it's acceptable, I can shoot at 1 100th of a second. If it's not sharp enough, I'm gonna take my shutter speed up faster to 1 200th of a second. 
and I'm going to take another photo and I'm going to check for sharpness and I'm going to keep doing that until I get to a shutter speed that's fast enough to freeze the motion and give me a sharp photo. After figuring out your shutter speed and nailing it down considering the focal length and the speed of your subject, the next thing you can do to get sharp photos is to keep your camera steady by eliminating all possible movement of the camera when taking the photo. Start by getting a good solid tripod, not one of those cheap $25 ones you can find at Walmart or on eBay. A good solid tripod will hold your camera rock steady. And this is critical, especially when you're shooting at shutter speeds that are slower than either 1 30th of a second or one over the focal length of your lens. Now, if you've got the camera on the tripod, when you press the shutter button, that can move the camera and introduce shake that will make your photo blurry. In order to eliminate that, use a shutter release. Release cables are pretty cheap and you can go to thecamerecompany.net and you can pick one of those up. But if you don't have a cable or your camera doesn't accept the cable, you can also use the self timer function of the camera. That way when you press the shutter button down, you can release the button and the camera has a few seconds to settle before it takes the photograph. The final thing you can do while the camera is on the tripod to eliminate shake is to use the mirror lockup function if your camera has it. See when your mirror flips up and flips back down again inside the camera, that's also going to vibrate and shake your camera. The mirror lockup function locks that mirror up and it keeps it there so that there's no shake introduced from the moving of that mirror. Now I know it's not always possible to use a tripod and in that case sometimes you can use things called monopods which is a one-legged tripod but if you can't even use something like that there are things you can do to make yourself steadier when you're holding the camera. One of the first things to do is just give yourself a good grounded stance. You're going to want to spread your feet shoulders width apart and really ground them into the ground. Feel them connecting to the earth. Okay, engage the muscles in your legs. Don't clench them so tight that your body's trembling, but engage the muscles so you can feel them sort of hugging your bones and hugging your legs. Do the same thing with your abdomen, you know, tense your gut, feel those muscles holding your body and your core steady. This is creating a solid foundation for you to shoot from. Then you're gonna to to bring the camera up and you're gonna to to hold it with two hands. And while you're holding it, you're gonna bring your elbows together. This is gonna help create an even more solid foundation. You actually wanna rest them on your chest and then bring the camera up to your face and compose your shot. Now, when you're ready to shoot, engage all of your muscles, hold yourself nice and steady, take a nice deep inhale and on a very slow exhale, very gentle exhale, Press and hold the shutter button firmly until the picture is done being taken. That will help steady you. Now this may not be perfect, but it's going to help. Another thing you can do is actually brace yourself against something, something like a wall, a tree, a post, anything, and actually push against it with your body. Lean in and push with your legs and push with your shoulders. Again, engaging your muscles to help hold your body steady. Now, if none of that works, there's another option which is super cheap and it's called the string pod. Now this is super, super easy to make. All you need to do is go to the hardware store and get yourself a nice decent sized washer, get a length of string that is about as tall as your nose from the ground, make it a little bit extra because you gotta tie it off, get yourself a bolt, a couple of washers, and a nut. It's really simple. Tie the string to the washer, this is gonna be dropped on the ground, and you stand on it. And then you're gonna take that bolt and you're gonna screw it into the tripod mount of your camera. And once you've done that, you can do all the stuff we talked about before to steady yourself, ground your feet, engage your muscles. But now you've also got this string that you can pull up against that creates tension, which helps make it even steadier. And then you do the same thing, breathe in nice and deep, and on the long, slow exhale, press and hold that shutter button as you take the photo. Now that we've figured out the shutter speed, we've got our camera as steady as possible. We learned last week about diffraction. We learned the week before about depth of field and calculating all of that. There's a couple of more things to consider for sharpness. Number one, your ISO. Try to keep it as low as possible when you're shooting. And I know that's not always possible because if you're in a sports situation, for instance, if you're indoors, if you're in a situation where you're using fast shutter speeds, you might need higher ISOs. Just be aware that when you go up in ISO, you're gonna get noise and that can reduce sharpness. Just like in diffraction, it doesn't mean you should never use high ISOs. It just means that you should know what's going to happen when you do. And the second thing is to make sure that your focus is accurate, that you focus exactly where you want on your subject. 
Now, I'm not going to tell you how to do that in this video because I already have a video that talks about how to do that. So just click this annotation here and that will take you to the video and you can learn about how to control the autofocus on your camera so you pick precisely where the focus is. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I know it was a lot. Do me a favor, down in the comments below, let me know what is your favorite tip for getting sharp photos. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, use the link down in the descriptions to get them to me. Stay tuned next week for my D600 hands-on review. And the most important thing, as always, is to get out there, take some damn photos, send them to me. I want to see your photos, guys. I will see you next Tuesday. Oh, is this steady enough?